As is customary at the end of every college football season, conference championship game berths are on the line. There's just a lot more math involved this year. We will explain with Steve Helwick. You can catch him on Hustle Belt and also Underdog Dynasty on SB Nation. He's a great source for Group of Five uh, logistics and uh, analysis. Steve, how you doing today? I'm doing excellent. Looking forward to a good week of football. I know there's a lot of chaotic energy around the college football world right now. When you look at Big Ten championship scenarios and maybe last minute scheduling games, I'm here for the chaos for maybe the 2020 season, but not too much long after. But I'll just enjoy every game that ends up happening. I love the chaos. I love the math. I love the logistics of trying to figure out who should be where. And the 2020 version is obviously taking us to new levels. So we'll start off in uh, Conference USA with a game between UAB and Rice, not originally scheduled this particular weekend. UAB was slated to take on Middle Tennessee State. But anyway, UAB and Rice, uh, interesting math here because you've got UAB with only three conference games played and Texas San Antonio with seven and they are both vying for a division championship. Yes, UAB has not played a game since October. Their last game was an October 31st double overtime loss to Louisiana Tech. Before that, UAB was undefeated in conference play and looking to be the clear front runner in the West. Now it's a win and end scenario for them. And if they lose, UTSA with a 5-2 and two conference record gets that spot in this USA title game, and they will play Marshall. The CUSA confirmed earlier today that Marshall will represent the East. So UAB is playing for a chance to play Marshall. And with a win, they can be the first ever team to participate in three consecutive CUSA championship games. It is amazing what Bill Clark has done because this program for 2015 and 2016, they did not field a football team at all. And to get back, 2017, have a winning record, and then 2018, win the conference go back to the conference title game in 2019 and have a chance to play for it in 2020. You just have to admire what Bill Clark's done for UAB, taking them to heights that they weren't even at before the cancellation and really building a team off of a bunch of JUCO and community college transfers. And it's really working out for the Blazers. And this week, UAB will have a very tough Rice team on their hands. Rice is two and two and Rice has not played very much this year. They, this will be only their second time this year playing back-to-back football games if back-to-back weeks if the game does happen. And Rice last week drew a lot of national attention. They got FWA Team of the Week for shutting out Marshall. It was the Rice Owls' first-ranked victory since 1997, their first shutout since 1995, and their first shutout over a ranked team since 1960. Their defense forced five interceptions, put Marshall quarterback Grant Wells into a lot of tough situations, and they won that game without their starting quarterback, their number one running back, and their star wide receiver. So Rice Owls, it's a difficult opponent, and they play an unorthodox style of just classic football, reminiscent of what Mike Bloomgren had at Stanford. So it's going to be an interesting clash of styles we have Saturday in Houston. Do you have a feel right now for which uh, direction you're going to lean on this game? Ooh, this one, this one's going to be about a 50-50 for me because Rice has been a little inconsistent in their performing this year, but I don't I don't blame them because they really haven't had normal football. They had three consecutive games canceled earlier this year, and the Owls didn't even start till October 24th. Last time we saw them play back-to-back weeks, though, their defense gave up 40 points in their opener to Middle Tennessee, and then the next week they sharpened that up and only gave up six to Southern Miss and didn't even allow the Golden Eagles into the end zone. So I really like what I've seen from Rice when they play back-to-back games, and I think that their defense can – carry some of the momentum over from last week. Also, UAB is playing a little shorthanded. Their best wide receiver, Austin Watkins, opted out of the season, and he will not play in this game or the CUSA championship game if the Blazers make it there. So UAB will have a smaller cast of characters, and they've had they've dealt with a lot of injuries throughout the season, uh, especially losing their quarterback, Tyler Johnston, early in the year. But they still have running back Spencer Brown, who feels like he's been playing at UAB forever, he has actually been playing at UAB since they were reinstated as a program, and he has another 740-yard rushing season through seven games, averaging over 100 per outing. So Spencer Brown's going to be a difficult stop for a uh, difficult stop on the ground for Rice, but Rice is loaded at the linebacker position, specifically Blaze Aldridge, who was the CUSA Defensive Player of the Week last week, 
and he was second in the FBS in tackles for loss this year. So I think that's going to be an intriguing matchup between Spencer Brown and Blaze Aldridge when UAB has the ball. Overall, I'm going to say that Rice does get a victory, and it'll be a close one. I think the Owls finally turn that corner, and they're going to play some winning football under Mike Bloomgren now. They hadn't beaten a winning record team since 2014, so that was a huge win for Bloomgren and the squad to get some confidence. I thought the talent was there the whole time, especially on the defensive end. I think Rice, especially if they get some of those guys back that they were missing last week, Mike Collins, Austin Trammell, uh, Mike Bloomgren didn't update their status in yesterday's press conference, but I, I'm sure that at least one of them will return for Saturday. I think if they get those guys back, they can – uh, knock UAB off and I'll have UTSA play for the their first ever CUSA title. UAB Rice on Saturday. The uh, Blazers are an eight point favorite uh, by most of the Vegas books. Uh, we got Steve Helwick on the line. You can catch him on SB Nation's Hustle Belt and also Underdog Dynasty as he breaks down the group of five for us on a regular basis and uh, gets a set with a ton of conference championship implications this weekend, including in the Mountain West, where much like the ACC, they did away with the divisions for this particular campaign. We got an under-the-radar San Jose State team that is 5-0 and on the season and in conference play. Nevada at 6-1. and They're playing this weekend. Boise State, as usual, figures into the championship race as well. Uh, your thoughts about the Spartans and the Wolfpack and, and what the scenarios are there. Man, this has been a, quite a year for San Jose State, a program that's been stuck in the gutter ever since a really good 2012 season. And you, other than Jamie Chadwell, maybe with Coastal Carolina, there's a couple other coaches you could name up there. Brian Kelly, who've had impressive seasons. But Brent Brennan, what he has done with San Jose State this season has been nothing short of impressive. And they have one of the best defenses in college football, allowing just 17 points per game, ranking 12th in the nation. And they got a nice transfer quarterback in Nick Starkle. Nick Starkle uh, struggled a little bit in his previous stops at Texas A&M and Arkansas. Last year, he was a quarterback in Arkansas when they lost to San Jose State. And now he's with San Jose State, and he's doing great things there with 5-0 and record. And he played pretty well passing through most of his games. Suffered a minor injury against San Diego State, but returned the following game against UNLV and delivered a win there. So Nick Starkle has a great cast of wide receivers, I would say, at San Jose State, and including Bailey Gaither and their tight end, Derek D. So San Jose State's going to move a lot with a, more of an air attack in this game, I would say, as is Nevada. Nevada has a very good quarterback, Carson Strong. I think through seven games this year, he has 21 touchdowns and four interceptions. And wide receiver, Romeo Dubs. Romeo Dubs is averaging over 100 yards per game this year, and I think he had a five-game stretch this year of just producing video game-like numbers. And he's a great deep threat for Nevada, and he will be a key cog to getting past the San Jose State defense, which really hasn't allowed too many passing yards this year. So I think you're setting up a good defensive showdown in this Mountain West team, but both of these offenses have really capable quarterbacks and capable receivers to move the ball downfield. And uh, San Jose State at home as a three-point favorite by Vegas over Nevada. And again, the winner awaits Boise State. Then we've got a situation in the MAC where Buffalo is undefeated, awaiting the winner of Ball State and Western Michigan. Steve, both teams coming in at uh, four and one. Yes, Ball State was a team that last year you could see that they were going to be on the rise. They started 3-0 in conference play, kind of choked a lot at the end of the season, just losing a lot of close games by scores like 44-41 to and 48-45, to games in the high 40s. The offense was there the entire time, and they return a lot of those players, including quarterback Drew Plitt, running back Caleb Huntley, who's only played three games this year. And when Caleb Huntley has been playing, he has been dominant. I think he's day-to-day -day right now, and if he returns for this game, this will be a huge difference for Ball State. But still, Ball State was able to upend two teams in the MAC with winning records without Huntley, and that was Central Michigan and Toledo. So the Cardinals are on a bit of a roll right now, even without their star running back. Uh, Huntley had a 200-yard, three-touchdown game earlier this year against Eastern Michigan with a walk-off touchdown, and he is definitely a player to watch. There are a lot of good skill position players in the MAC. And Huntley's one of them. And another one that you want to watch is Dwayne Eskridge. Dwayne Eskridge might be one of the most electrifying receivers in college football. And he's a great return man, too. He had a 100-yard 
kickoff return touchdown this year. And he has been a monster in the receiving game, especially on the RPO slant calls that Western Michigan likes to call a lot. And Eskridge's first four games this year, he had over 110 yards each time and combined for six touchdowns in those games, including a 212 three touchdown, 212 yard, three touchdown outing against Central Michigan. He played cornerback last year, transitioned back to wide receiver this year, and he is a player that is a must watch every single time he takes the field. And Western Michigan, they had their first loss of the season last week against Eastern Michigan, but the offense is not a problem at all. They did turn it over three times, but they still put up uh, 42 points in that loss. So Caleb Ellaby, who has 16 touchdowns, one interception this year, combined with Eskridge, and then you have a good running game with Michigan State transfer Ladarius Jefferson. Both these teams are really loaded on offense. I think this is going to be a high-scoring shootout. Really excited for this one, and it seems like an up-in-the-air 50-50 type game, and the winner gets to play a very talented Buffalo team who's ranked in the AP pool right now. Huntley, as you mentioned, uh, banged up at five and a half yards per carry and six touchdowns, and most of his uh, support has come from Ty Evans, who's averaging 4.7 yards per carry uh, in that game for Ball State taking on Western Michigan. Again, both teams at four and one. The winner takes on Buffalo in the MAC championship. For more MAC news and uh, coverage there, join Steve, the rest of the crew there at uh, Hustle Belt, also Underdog Dynasty on SB Nation. Steve, we always appreciate the breakdown. Thank you. Appreciate it.